Hello and welcome to Radicals 1.2, the parent graph. Okay, so we've moved on to a different um, concept in Algebra 2, and it's going to be concerning radicals. So uh, a lot of the things you're going to get in this section are like background information. So it's going to be kind of boring, and you just got to write a lot of stuff down. So you probably might have to push pause on this video to, to keep up, because I'm not going to wait for you guys to write all these numbers down. I'm just going to go right through. Yeah, so you might want to hit pause um, to write stuff down. Yeah, because otherwise, like I said, I'm just going to keep on talking. Okay, so basically this first slide is going to show you guys uh, what the graph of the square root of x looks like. And uh, I guess the easiest way to get a, a picture of a graph is just make a table with x and y's in the table. And f of x is kind of going to be like your, your y value, right? So, and when you do this, you're going to be able to plot your dots based on the coordinates, the numbers that you're given. And when you plot all these dots, you're going to kind of get a feel for what the graph is going to look like. Okay, So I'm going to plot these dots, and, and don't mind if the dots aren't perfectly accurate. Like, there's no way I'm going to get it exactly at 1.4142. That's impossible. But I'm going to put a dot at the best possible spot that I might think match up with that 1.4142. And it's not going to be perfect, but hopefully it's, it's pretty accurate. Yeah, But there's no way it's going to be super accurate, though. That's impossible. Okay, and then 4, 2, and then 5, 2.2, so maybe about right there. And then 6, 2.44, so hopefully around there. And then 7, 2.6. So it's only growing up real small now, right? It's kind of almost leveling off. It's, it's, going, it's increasing at a very slow pace now. And then 9, comma 3. Oops, maybe I didn't make that one a little too too high because it, it jumped up. It seems like it jumped up too much. Okay. Maybe I can make this less this other dot a little better also. Okay, and then uh, what else? 10. 10, comma 3.16. So so you can notice this graph isn't perfect, but um, I'm not expecting this graph to be perfect because you have so many decimal type numbers. When I connect all the dots, then you kind of get a feel for what this graph is going to look like. And you're going to notice, wow, this graph starts right here at this dot that's at 0, 0. It doesn't start on the left side. Yeah, It doesn't start on the negative x side. So notice how the, the graph, the grid, when I, when I gave you guys the grid, it didn't have any negative x values because this graph existed pretty much only in the upper right-hand side. Yeah. So notice how this, like I said, this graph doesn't have any negative x's. Why doesn't it have any negative x's? Right? Why doesn't it have negative x's? Well, let's see what that answer to that question is, which is actually problem number two. Why should we not use negative values of x with the function f of x equals square root of x? Well, if I do that, if I put a negative number in the square root, well, I'm going to get an imaginary number, which I cannot graph on an x and y grid. You can't do that. It's not possible. Okay? So, then you got your typical, what is your domain and what is your range? Because eventually we're going to have to talk about finding domain and range for this, this square root function, this radical function. So, when you find domain, it's your values, your set of inputs that you use to graph the graph that I just did on the previous slide. And I had to use x values that were bigger than zero. I had to use every single one of them. Right? But I didn't want to use anything less than zero because they would be negative numbers. And negative numbers will make imaginary numbers if I put the negative in the square root. And I cannot do that. Okay, So my domain, my x values have to be pretty much positive numbers or greater than zero. Okay, Range is the y values that I needed to draw the graph. And if you look at the graph on the previous slide, I had to use the y values. They were all pretty much bigger than zero also. Okay, so your, your range is going to be f of x, colon f of x, greater than or equal to zero. Okay, all right. Last question, number five. Okay, so here's a, here's a picture of, or here's a graph of g of x, which is your x squared graph. So let me write that on the graph. And f of x, which is your square root of x graph. And if you notice, when those two graphs are drawn together on the same grid, they're symmetric with each other. They're symmetric about the line y equals x. Okay, and this is because they are inverse functions to each other. 
they're inverses of each other. And because they're inverses, when you graph them, they're going to be symmetric about the y equals x diagonal line. Okay? And this is a super important concept that you're going to have to know really well when you guys hit trig or ALGE 3 next year. So um, your teachers are probably going to go into more uh, detail about this concept in next year's class. But we wanted to introduce it to you now that when you have inverse functions, when you graph them, they're going to be symmetric about the y equals x diagonal line. Okay? So there's your introduction, and next year's teacher will take the baton from me and teach you more. Okay? All right. And yeah, this, this lesson is done. <laughs> okay? And there's no homework assigned to this lesson, so therefore you just got to pretty much watch this video, and you're good to go for this lesson. I will see you later. Bye-bye.